first set of panel discussion. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we're going to have our insights on smart meter billing. And my opportunity to welcome Mr. Debashish Dash, Energy Leader, Managing Director, Energio, to be the moderator. Mr. Nick Birrell, Vice President of Industry Strategy, Oracle Energy and Water. Mr. Murli Shankar Gopal Krishnan, Vice President, Product Engineering, Fluent Grid. Mr. Santa Dyuti Samantha, IT Head, TND Cluster, Tata Power, Chief of Information Technology, TPDDL. Shri Indranoch Kund, AGM, PPND, Assam Power Distribution Company Limited. Shri Shakil Ahmed, DMIT, IPDS, Assam Power Distribution Company Limited. Mr. Devashish Sarkar, Director Technical, Tirupura State Electricity Corporation Limited. Last but not the least, Ms. Seema Bhaga, DGM IT, SDNI, Punjab State Power Corporation Limited, PSEB. So I, uh, well, I welcome each one of you for the first set of uh, panel discussion. And now I would look forward for the moderator to please take over from here. All the best. So you are on mute. I'm so sorry, actually. So am Would I audible? Yes, yes, yes. All right. OK. Thank you so much for the introduction. And let's start. I'm sure we are actually a bit late, um, but definitely we'll catch up. Uh, so today's agenda is to discuss uh, on the billing part. So as you know, there are a lot of changes happening uh, in India, especially uh, when we have the AMI transformation journey starting in, uh, we do have the prepaid, we do have the uh, different uh, you know, interface systems getting integrated with the billing system. So we have a huge customer demand in terms of getting the information, what they are consuming, how to have the saving, how to have the better efficiency. So there are a lot of demands now. Uh, when I started my career, I was not actually even dreaming the kind of, uh, you know, the innovations coming up in the billing and the customer side. So we have the opportunity today, uh, you know, the, the best of the world's couple of gentlemen who are going to discuss. So let's start. Uh, I, I honestly I just want to uh, have a little bit introduction. Uh, so my introduction is already done. So I would like to have a Nick, if you can just give one minute about you. So that would be great for the audience. Uh, yes, uh, thank you. It's, it's a real pleasure to be here. My name is Nick Birrell. I am Vice President of Industry Strategy for Oracle Energy and Water. Um, Oracle, as you know, is a, is a large global organisation. We're, we're involved in thousands of utilities globally. And I help set the future direction of our solutions in, in, this, in this very important industry. Thank you. All right. So we have the opportunity to have uh, one of the finest gentlemen from the product side. He's from Fluent Grid, Mr. Murli Sankar. So, sir, can we have your one minute uh, introduction, please? Hi, uh, good morning. Uh, <clears throat> this is Murli Shankar and I represent Fluent Grid. Um, yeah, so we have been in the in the Fluent Grid as an organization has been serving the utility distribution space for the last 20 years. Um, we offer an end-to-end -end solution and then we have been uh, doing the billing system um, in the, in, 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 uh, for, for quite some time and, and of uh, the last seven years, we have been <clears throat> uh, rolling out the complete end-to-end -end solution starting from our head-end system into our uh, um, MDMS and into the prepaid uh, solution. Uh, and I uh, lead the uh, product engineering for the suite of products for um, uh, Fluent Grid and looking forward for some interactive discussion during this forum. Thank you, sir. So we have uh, Mr. Samantha from Tata Power, uh, who is a pioneer and, and Tata Power has always been an organization for innovation. So let's welcome Mr. Samantha and Mr. Samantha, if you can just introduce yourself in one minute. Thank you. Thank you. Tata Power is a vertically uh, integrated uh, power sector uh, organization where actually we also make renewable and uh, we also implement renewable. At the same time, the fossil fuel plus hydro 
transmission uh, distribution now we are actually expanding in all the segments whether it's a renewable or distribution or transmission through inorganic organic in both the ways and uh, definitely we will share about the technology and its implementation and the adoption by the customer more from the customer point of view thank you all right okay thank you and i'm sure actually there are um, uh, gentlemen are there uh, from from uh, the distribution side the discom uh, so what i suggest let's have this an interactive sessions so i obviously has uh, i have to start with couple of questions uh, you know to, from from the agenda perspective uh, but we'll take it actually the questions as it comes from the discoms and we'll discuss those okay so uh, with that uh, uh, we have also mr devasi sarkar uh, who is Uh, the md from tripura state electricity board so uh, sir can you please introduce yourself for a minute uh, good morning uh, myself devashish sarkar i am director technical plus md in charge of tripura state electricity board uh, as far as the tripura state electricity board is concerned it is one of the very um, few uh, state, state board which have introduced the smart meters as a pilot project uh, way back in uh, 2017-18 so uh, for 45000 smart meter installation in agartala city also we have uh, uh, in, uh, installed uh, 1.84 lakhs prepaid meters uh, along with our normal postpaid meters so we have uh, integrated the entire uh, postpaid prepaid as well as the smart meters in our billing system so that's uh, we are facing some issues also because of this integration and other things so it will be better uh, if we interact with it, how we can improve our billing system by integrating all the things so that is i think by today's discussions we can have a more clarity about the things uh, and we can also discuss our issues and uh, let us get the hear from the product uh, manufacturers of what is their solution and how we can improve our Uh, overall integration and so that we can get the proper clarity of the entire uh, proper utilization of the all this uh, digitization uh, system thank you thank you sir nice to have you okay so what i suggest so i are team uh, if you can actually take the questions i think we have a very limited time we may not have all the questions to be answered but please take the questions we can uh, connect um, uh, you know one to one so uh, with that let us start actually the session so my first question is uh, for mr nick uh, so mr nick uh, if you see even actually what uh, mr devas is told from tripura state electric board see there is a paradigm shift into the billing process now okay so uh, initially you know the decade uh, back it was more utility centric so uh, we used to have our own algorithm and all those stuff but now uh, having the customers in place and having the distributed energy resources in place it actually has got a lot of demands into the new things and the changing needs uh, from the customer and the operational perspective how do you think uh, you know the product a mature product uh, should be there actually to take care all these changing needs uh yeah good good firstly good question um it's it's true um there's a a, a a trend that we see globally shifting uh for the billing process to shift to a more customer centric view um energy billing is now all about the customer the expectations of customers on their on the utilities are of course ever increasing and and customers see the type of service and flexibility they get from other businesses such as online shopping and taxi ride shares as an example and they they expect a similar service from their energy provider also customers are becoming more critical in the energy value chain so more than ever consumers are becoming active grid participants no longer are, are energy consumers at the edge of your grid they are now both consumers and producers of electricity in other words they're prosumers and and we see at oracle we see this as part of the great evolution of a customer's relationship with utilities what started as a purely transactional relationship where they consume the product and they bill is evolving to one where the customer is right at the center of the utility's value chain at the center of their grid so to to adapt to this a utility smart meter billing system must be customer centric at its very core 
and it needs to be very agile to incorporate these new demands of an ever-demanding customer. It needs to focus on the customer first, basically, at least the way I see it. And it has to provide capability to bring all information about the customer into a comprehensive 360 degree view. And I'm not just talking about meter to cash information, such as you know, billing, property, payment and metering information, but I'm talking about deep insights, such as how they are consuming their energy via advanced disaggregation techniques. I mean, wouldn't it be great if you could tell your customer that you've detected that their refrigerator is inefficient and they should upgrade it? So th these more advanced approaches about uh, allow the utility, um, or more advanced approaches on, on this front actually allow the utility to build what at Oracle we call a digital twin of the customer, much like how utilities build a digital twin of their assets. And, and this allows utilities to model the customer and help them to understand their behaviours and in doing so, predict them by using you know, advanced AI and machine learning techniques. So in summary, overall, by, by utilities better focusing um, uh, the billing of their customer by a more customer-centric approach, they should be able to better implement new customer business models such as you know, net billing, vehicle to grid services, pay-as-you-go models, and other innovative energy and non-energy customer service offerings that may allow you also to increase your revenues. But to do all this, uh, to be able to adapt to the changing needs of your customer, your billing system must fundamentally be customer-centric. And in my opinion, what I've seen in other utilities, in, in other markets of the world, this is the first thing and the last thing you should be looking for in any uh, smart meter billing, billing system. Thank you for your question. Thank you, thank you, Nick. Uh, that's very apt. Uh, so if we continue uh, the question, so when you talk about uh, the customer, the, you talk about AMI, uh, so it, it demands actually a lot of real-time transactions. So, uh, so, so in, in a nutshell, the whole billing process, the downstream process from MDMS to the billing system, um, so it's more actually changing the pace from batch process to more actually real-time or quasi-real-time, right? So in, in that situation, so Mr. Burley, as a you know, product person, what do you think actually the design decisions to be taken or actually the retrofit needs to be there uh, in the existing billing systems for discounts to take care of the new changing needs? Right, <clears throat> um, perfect. So uh, we have today the existing systems which typically handle the postpaid billing. Uh, the key is to have uh, a system that is able to enable uh, tariff configuration for both uh, postpaid and uh, prepaid uh, billing in terms of uh, allowing a very intuitive configuration of the tariff and not have uh, separate systems for different um, kind of uh, the prepaid and postpaid consumers or categories. <clears throat> That's uh, one area that I, that I think from a design standpoint should be thought about on how we can have a uh, converged mechanism of tariff engine, I'll call it that way, number one. And uh, number two is how loosely coupled can a tariff definition be with the uh, billing engine itself? Uh, what that means is, let us say there is uh, some kind of communication issue with the meters and 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 uh, the, uh, the the reading, the meter reading is not able to communicate on a daily load profile. So what action can be taken? So maybe maybe the billing agent can be run locally within a meter. So still the tariff definition has to be um, modeled in a separate engine. So the important facet of a design is to have a loosely coupled architecture between the tariff definition and the billing engine itself, number two. And number three, I believe is the interoperability with the MDMS and uh, the billing systems. <clears throat> While the IEC 61968 specification uh, defines how the uh, data exchange model should be between the different systems. Uh, it is important that each of the vendors uh, comply uh, to those specifications to reduce the rollout time for the utilities. I think 
these are the, some of the key design parameters that has to be taken care of um, uh, when, when, when we choose the right uh, billing system. And of course, the, so, uh, being a real-time billing, the authentication and authorization of these services, being a SOAP service or a REST service is a, a very important facet of the des design. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, so I think uh, these four items are something that, um, uh, that, would, that would influence the uh, decision-making of an utility for choosing the right uh, billing engine, prepaid billing or a postpaid billing engine. Um, uh, that's about it from my side, uh, Debasish. Yeah, that's, that's great. No, I, I completely understand. I think despite of the challenges what we face today into the network, uh, uh, you know, the, the real time uh, or actually, you know, if we actually just um, bring some processes locally uh, and actually quite uh, replicate with the mainstream, uh, whenever actually the network back or whenever the network is stable, so I think in that way, at least some, uh, so we call actually edge computing. So I think something if can be done at the locally and, and then actually push the insight to the uh, largest uh, stream of the game. So I think that is uh, one decision. And as you rightly told, in terms of the security, in terms of the architecture, the scalability, so what actually makes sense uh, going uh, from batch process to the real time. Thank you, Mr. Murli for that. So I will just actually take um, you know one step again ahead on the billing side. So what I see uh, the essence today uh, to uh, minimize the loss, billing loss. So government of India is pushing a, um, a, you know, highly on the prepaid uh, part. Uh, so as a person actually working on the ground, Mr. Samantha uh, from Tata Power, what do you think, uh, you know, the measurements, uh, so the discounts should be taken, uh, even if you have taken something in terms of giving the flexibility to customer um, and, and uh, bring actually the prepaid uh, on the ground uh, where actually the utilities can also improve the, uh, uh, you know, the, the collection and other things. Thank you, Devashish. Um, prepaid actually we implemented long back, you know, that uh, old secure liberty system and many other things. Uh, but, uh, you know, that that was actually, you can say the old generation smart meter, where the tariff was there, keen, etc. But to be very frank, it was also not really suitable for the Indian market from the uh, security point of view, or the uh, theft. So we had not scaled up beyond the government infrastructure. And later on, we had with the smart metering, we had deployed uh, smart uh, prepayment where actually the entire the intelligence was actually at the back depending on the communication and good thing is in the prepayment normally we give 10% uh, credit whenever actually one coupon is given so that means 10% of the time consumption you can have with non communication so that is what is our uh, exploration while implementation but uh, to be very frank the rather the purpose uh, why you were doing that is uh, two things. What is simplification cash flow earlier? Another, what was the ATNC loss? To be very frank, we have reduced ATNC loss from 57% to 6%. So uh, we did it in a different way. And to be very frank, customer pays when actually your bills are correct and actually there is ease of payment. So uh, we had given a lot of self-service channel, digital channels and enablements. Even for the post-payment or pre-payment, like there are... Uh, custom alerts they can create through their apps or portal and so that uh, they get because you know daily up to 200 unit you get free free power so people want that at 190 uh, unit we should be able to know so that kind of stuff or your demand limit like beyond which actually the charges are high so we had created interactive bill which is like the entire crm is on the angular in your mobile uh, where actually entire video staff and native language, whatever language actually your mobile is set in, in that thing, audio, uh, everything is there and ease of payment like from that there only. So uh, not only that thing, during COVID, we also had enabled with the self meter reading on the OCR so that people can actually do that. Where is smart meter? No question where smart meter is not there. There. Another thing is the chatbot and many other application where actually people can 
the thing is ki most of the thing because the amazon is successful because it is self service customer chooses by its own so we actually got the uh, 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 energy from those uh, experiences so we had enabled customer more and uh, in last 3 year like our uh, digital payment rose from below 50% to uh, 95 96% during the covid and post covid it came down to 85 86% but it is sustaining around 85 87% so this actually had given us massive opportunity and massive amount of data for further uh, you know that customer payment default and many other thing which uh, definitely uh, if require i'll share so uh, further uh, customer activity had created further digital footprint which is creating further business value okay so, no that that's great mr samakshi why actually i um, i asked that question say uh, all my entire last 15 years before actually um, uh, you know founding energio so i was working with uh, globally the customers like american electric power excel energy uh, detroit electric and they have super robust customer platform i do not understand why actually in india i mean definitely there are few discounts like you uh, or some uh, very advanced uh, like there was mr devasis was telling so there are uh, couple of discounts are focusing on the customer but i see the uh, the pathetic scenario of having the customer engagement from discom side i think it has it needs definitely a framework at government of india perspective also should have some framework some compliance needs to be there where actually customer gets connected and in 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 a way actually the highest benefit the utility would be getting from that okay while actually for the demand management while of the Uh, you know uh, engagement customer engagement new customers new services so that's that's a challenge area and uh, that's good that we are getting the opportunity to discuss about that today so thanks mr samant for that we, i will come back to you uh, i will just go to mr sarkar um, he, he he already told uh, he has got some prepared implementation and and he has bit ahead actually in this game just want to understand mr sarkar what problem you have faced while actually you have implemented and what problem you have in hand where actually you need support from the experts uh first thing is uh, uh, if you go through uh, if you uh, see the history of tripura tripura is basically a 70% is a uh, forest area and 30% is a land area so there was a difficult terrain if it is a northeast is itself is a slightly isolated location plus is a difficult terrain so uh, what we uh, face is the uh, as we have implemented both smart meters and uh, prepaid meters uh, even in the uh, city of agartala uh, we feel uh, even if we go for a uh, smart meters uh, uh, communication module is should be the proper because until and unless communication will be proper so we will not get the benefit we will not pass on the benefit to the customers as we are discussing as uh nick is telling and what muruli is telling basically whatever the customer centric billing and other things and we if we get the try to pass on the benefit of the smart meters to the customers our communication module should be proper because if you uh, i want to share our experience with the smart meters uh, the smart meters was installed by the wipro with jnj meters uh, from the israel and with communication of rf communication module and from 45000 meters was been uh, uh, targeted for the uh, is a, uh, one of the first pilot project in india uh, in a state utility but uh, after 6 uh, months or 7 months after this implementation we found that uh, out of 45000 meters um, uh, 40000 meter is communicating rest 5000 is not communicating and if this number goes on decreasing and ultimately uh, it comes down to 30000 so basically we are now we are the, uh, not getting the entire benefit of this uh, smart metering then there was a issue with the um, um, uh, this we pro along with the gnj and other uh, communication then we again changed the uh, metering um, vendors as well as the communication vendors and we have tried for the separate vendors but as of now this uh, this our 45000 pilot project is i i could say is not a fully successful project is a half done project so and uh, main failure is the communication we have tried with rf communication we have tried with um, uh, gprs communications 
uh, so uh, so we i i will request definitely the product vendors to uh, uh, share take the inputs from the uh, utility and um, have to work depending on the terrain depending on the uh, area they have to first tell uh, the build a solid communication module until and unless this communication module is properly designed we will not get the uh, proper benefit of the smart meters as far as the prepaid meters is concerned we have utilized the genus prepaid meters of 1.84 lakhs prepaid meters of instant with sts vending concept where uh, unlike the cts vending where the um, money will be reflected here the directly kwh unit has been reflected and we have utilized that uh, the vending because and we are utilized mostly in the rural areas because rural areas we cannot get the install the smart meters and because uh, we cannot get the proper communication where the communication is really weak so we have uh, we have to go for a uh, sts uh, vending uh, prepaid meters and we have so far installed 1.84 lakhs prepaid meters but as samant has rightly pointed out uh, prepaid meters has got some different issues because uh, if the consumers does not want to recharge and they are if they are taking the through pilferage methodology we have to go for a straight vigilance otherwise we we cannot disconnect it as on home because uh, what the what we are facing they are taking the first recharge after that they are not recharging we have got the mis but we cannot we are finding out of 1.884 lakhs around 30000 consumers are not recharging then we have to start the vigilance activity so uh, our our experience is if we go with the smart meters prepaid meters first the consumers awareness needs to be developed until and unless consumers has to be first aware and uh, take the full benefit of this metering so whatever the utility will do for the improvement of the customers billing customers centric billing so but a consumer has to be first ac accept it and they must acknowledge this benefit then the it will be a win win situation both for the customer as well as for the utility but as of now uh, i still uh, firmly believe that there was a lack of uh, awareness between the normal uh, normal consumers of the um, uh, uh, utilities consumer so that's why the uh, this whatever the smart metering scheme is going on whatever the prepaid metering scheme is going on, is not successful fully so uh, that is my experience with the utility because i am working with the different utilities for the last 34 years so i have got uh, i have seen the system of cesc i have seen the system of uh, torrent and i have now seen the system of state utility so i have worked both in the private as well as the uh, government utility so i know what are the difference different utilities are facing and that is my experience what i'm sharing and i think i will request uh, the other product vendors to work on it so that the proper benefit of the uh, this prepaid meters and smart meters can be uh, taken all right no i think i think your experience is from the ground so this is uh, completely taken i mean you know there is the network problem and with the terrain with the hilly areas actually it gets extremely difficult actually to manage okay so i think that is that is a point taken and i don't know uh, how the um, billing systems product owners can take care i think this is more actually the network design the service providers and those things um, you know that that probably actually uh, into the play but uh, in in a just actually you know, just to give a reply back or answer back nick or murli or mr samant would you like to just throw some uh, pointers i mean how to take care the network problem what mr sarkar has on the ground anyone yeah i can speak about in fact uh, in one of the project murli is uh, partner to us you know that uh, when actually you pass on a piece of brick through four people from one place to another you have seen in one movie then it's not that anybody is strong uh, the brick will not go from one place to another so there is hes application there is network there is network interface card and there is meter and it's actually coordination between it's a system it's not just a simple thing and uh, you know that for in case of rf when we deployed we struggled when we had deployed nb iot which is one is hdlc another is tcp ip in both the cases we have struggled but the thing is when i we put all the people together they 
had spoken uh, fairy exchange you know that after certain certain time we had seen that 95% 96% 98% 99% you know so because you know that when actually hcs is uh, sending a request getting a time out that means on the other side the time out has to be increased so that they can shake hand then only the packet will be transferred so that discussion technical discussion between the people in the from the hcs to the meter has to happen and that is what is called meter integration into the network or the hcs so uh, i think murli would you like to add your experience yeah i think i think that's a perfect uh, um, convergence sir uh, perseverance to put it in one word that's a perseverance it's important to ensure that we find solution for each of the problems uh, with debashi sir was uh, talking about the communication issues which i think uh, has to be looked at a little bit localized and and uh, and and uh, figure out the field level problems before we can uh, say yeah. a solution to that see i always actually uh, tell uh, you know this uh, is a joke i tell i mean for everything in india as per the networking and as per the communication what you need to do you need to have a very sophisticated multiplexer so you actually take service from different uh, providers and actually piggy back at least if one is filling the second one is picking up okay so i mean see that's the tyranny you know on the, on the network side uh, but uh, mr sarkar point taken uh, let's see actually we probably offline we can little bit also brainstorm and we can come back we'll come back to you if there is something can be done okay so we'll go back to uh, question answer again the next question is uh, for um, mr nick so mr nick uh, there is a huge demand in terms of today in the rate management and rate calculation because there are distributed energy resources there are uh, renewables are there so there is a lot of mix and match and also commercial industrial customers they want to have the flexibility so how your product takes care of the rate calculation and rate management in a flexible manner uh yeah so good question so so firstly correct flexibility and tailoring on rate calculation and rate management are now key requirements and and to be frank this is not an easy problem to solve well after all rates as we all know can be very complex at times um for oracle our key solutions have focused on we've focused on utility rating for more than 30 years now we have deployed our we deployed our first version of our rating for smart meters way back in the early 2000s and it was also around this time that we also developed our first generation of prepay billing as well so i guess with this history of ours in building utility rate calculation and management solutions we've learned a lot from our from our many customers including uh many indian customers as well i should add um so all so always always flexibility and tailoring of rate calculation and management they they key business requirements so what you see in our solutions today is is really the result of this 30 plus years of our industry learning such as providing comprehensive a comprehensive library of pre-built functions for complex rate and billing scenarios that should make it easy for business users and I stress business users uh to set up modify and maintain rate and usage calculations everything from uh simple quantity based energy charges uh to more complex things like critical peak pricing peak time rebates net billing and and complex vector calculations and i, I want to emphasize yes i did say business users can set these rates up so what we've done we enable business users to design and deploy their own rates by ensuring that by ensuring that they can do this via configuration meaning no coding skills are required which obviously translates to flexibility and agility we've also invested very heavily in our user interface um which needs to be intuitive and needs to be a visual interface uh for 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 the rating engine which makes it really easy for business users to understand and to set up and to modify their rates and the various rate components that that consist of it and and when they have set up the specific rates users can then reuse components that they've set up on other rates so this saves time and effort and may moving forward when the business decides to implement new 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 uh new tariffs and rates 
But of, of course, making sure that the rate calculates correctly is, is obviously critical. So we include comprehensive rate testing and versioning capabilities. So this allows users to self-test individual rates and also to automatically test rates as part of regression testing. So there's automated testing. So I guess through all these features that I've spoken about and, and a few more, our, our approach hopefully makes it easy to set up, modify and manage rates and billing calculations. And, and which now of course is relied upon by utilities throughout the world, including utilities in India. And through our rating engine, we, we at the moment we deliver more than 700 million or, or 72 Quora bills annually. So that's our approach to um, making things flexible and agile. Thank you, Mr. Ning. Thanks. Uh, so uh, we'll move on to uh, the gentleman from uh, Assam Power Distribution Company, Mr. Indrajit and Mr. Sakil Ahmad. So they have raised the hand. We would like to hear you uh, from you, sir, if you have any question or you would like to share something. Yeah. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, so I'm Shakri Lamet, Deputy Manager IT from Assam Power Distribution Company Limited. So here uh, in our utility, we have around 2,25,000 smart meters, out of which 9,000 smart meters are in prepaid mode and they are functioning and we have around 99% availability of the meters. So what we do is that we build the consumers in our own in-house billing system, this 9,000 meters on daily basis. So everything is automated, reconnection, disconnection, and this load limit functionalities applied has been applied. So major issue we are facing is that uh, one issue is with the bill desk, the payment that consumers makes that doesn't reflect in our system. The one issue is that. And second issue we face is that <clears throat> we have uh, multiple meter manufacturers and they have their own hidden systems. So integrating those multiple hidden systems with one particular MDMS is an issue. So we take some time to integrate different MDMS. And in the long run, we are planning to install around uh, six lakh smart prepaid meters. Yeah, LOA has been included. So uh, how to handle those huge amount of smart prepaid meters? That's my question. That, that your question actually takes me back one and a half year back while actually we are implementing 10 million smart meter implementation for Saudi Arabia. That was in my IBM days. So I was designing the system uh, and then there are four uh, head end system suppliers, um, uh, numerous meter suppliers. And uh, then the um, Saudi government had given mandate to bring everything into play within one and a half years, 18 months. So that was a tough job. And the major, major thing, as you rightly told Mr. Sakil, so th the interface standards, and I think Mr. Samantha and uh, I think even Mr. Murli has Pointed, pointed out that. So until, unless you have a very standardized interface defined by utility, so it is not going to work. So what actually that, that remains the onus of the SI person who is doing the work. And what we did uh, with my experience, what we did in IBM, we had to sit with uh, the, uh, you know, the utility company, Saudi Electric, and with the um, uh, you know, some, all these head and system vendors, we defined actually a standard interface, okay? So the moment actually you build that standard interface, they had to do something tweaking, but there was actually very streamlined how actually we used to get actually the data uh, in the XML format from all the head and systems uh, in a standardized way, okay? But I would like to uh, ask Mr. Murli or Mr. Nick or Mr. Samantha if you want to highlight uh, on, the, on the question. Yeah, um, I think there were two parts uh, to the to uh, what uh, Shakil sir was asking. The first thing was, I think, uh, some kind of uh, payment gateway integration issue, um, which I think, uh, uh, not too sure what exactly the problem is, but then, um, um, yeah, so as, as you rightly pointed out, it's important there's a standardized integration between uh, the uh, multiple systems in the IT ecosystem. Um, that's that's something that every utility should ensure. Uh, coming to the first, uh, the second part of the question, uh, which is uh, the ability of the MDMS to interface with multiple HES. 
while it also reflects back on uh, how the MDMS's capability to uh, categorize the uh, meters uh, to be able to uh, identify the owner of that particular meter and be able to uh, poll or listen to uh, the corresponding HES is also something that should be taken care of as a part of the design decision. So when the MDMS vendor is chosen, uh, uh, the way the MDMS is designed for, is it, is it feasible on the MDMS side to categorize the meter and, and, and align the HES system to which the meter belongs to is, is something uh, uh, at the implementation stage, if it's taken care of, that problem um, uh, should be uh, handled. That's my uh, yeah. opinion. Absolutely, absolutely. I think you are spot on that. I think there are two parts. One is definitely the standardization of interface, Mr. Sakil. And the second is the ability, I mean, the, the, the downstream from the MDM, uh, from the head end system to the MDM, um, uh, and then from the MDM to the billing system in a uh, you know high end capability and high performance platform is required actually to make this happen. Okay. Okay, so I think uh, IRA team, we have 10 more minutes, right? Uh, can, can you just actually give uh, Hanson if, if it is okay, okay for 10 more minutes? Uh, uh, yes, it's, it's fine. It's yeah, fine. All right. Okay. So uh, my question, actually the next question is uh, related to the same thing again to Mr. Murli. So Mr. Murli, uh, Mr. Devasis uh, Sarkar already pointed out. So the challenges in the prepared and even actually the same thing Mr. Sakil told. So what do you think in terms of the planning perspective, if a utility has been told to implement the prepaid functionality, what are the top two, three, two, three things they need to consider before actually jumping into the prepaid implementation? Right. So one important uh, planning process, um, I believe based on the experience that we have had is um, how should we schedule the billing process or or uh, continue with what uh, the British sir was saying about uh, the knowledge of how efficient the data collection of the daily load profile is. Like if the daily load profile starts pumping in data, let's say uh, at, at 12 a.m. in the morning. So how many percentage of the meters uh, complete their uh, collection uh, by um, whatever time, let's say uh, 4 a.m. or 5 a.m. And, and we should be able to plan when to schedule the billing process based on the data collection efficiency and uh, the uh, and and be able to identify how uh, and size the hardware needed for for running the billing engine for those many number of meters during the period of time let's say in our case we we uh, in one of the utilities uh, uh, planned it in such a way that the billing gets completed by 11 a.m. in the morning, so that between 11 to 3 p.m. or 4 p.m., if I remember right, uh, the the uh, RCDC happens, and then for those non-communicating meters, then we start the billing again after the 4 p.m. Uh, time, and and that is one of the key uh, uh, planning process number one, and number two is there should be business process uh, defined. Like in case of um, um, uh, non-communicating meters for a few days, then uh, how would the uh, uh, exceptions be handled in such situations and how will the notifications to the consumer go? Uh, should we do estimated billing on daily load profile, which today's uh, uh, um, the regulatory authorities don't have any specific estimation mechanism or estimation mechanism is defined, but then uh, uh, we don't have a, a defined regulation which would say that the valid deduction can happen based on the estimations. Uh, so uh, that angle should also be thought of that if the uh, communication is not there for let's say three or four days, uh, then how should the, um, the notification to the consumer happen? And and how should the valid or then probably the negative balance of the consumer, what should be the business process uh, defined for handling such exception cases is uh, something that should be thought of before um, implementing the prepaid billing. Thank you, thank you. Thanks, uh, those are really vital informations. I think that is helpful for everyone actually from the DISCOM, whoever is listening. 
so okay so let's let's move to uh, mr samanta so mr samanta i have a question uh, regarding the insight okay so we know unlocking potential what nick told and even actually previously uh, just just before this session um, uh, the gentleman from oracle he was telling see there is lot of uh, you know potential which is actually comes from the customer inside billing insight okay so do you have any sort of uh, use case or something which is implemented in tata power uh, which is more actually analytics and ai related and you have got the value out of it uh, you know in the first thing in the ground see uh, uh, we have actually found that data of the customer behavior is very much useful say for example customer payment default prediction Uh, so when we started uh, the effort to collect go, went down right so we and also we had segmented which customer is to be treated in which way to whom caesar is needed to whom only sms is needed right so another thing is uh, you know that uh, we have almost 30% customers on almost more than 80% number on off transformers Uh, that is actually is very small customer with four five uh, customers where actually uh, the from the customer billing data we actually aggregate to find out the load of the transformer so that we can save transformer burning so that also enables technical loss reduction opex reduction as well as improve on the cid as well as improve on the cash flow as well as you know that improve on the reliability and many, many other stuff so these are something value from the customer billing data now when those are smart meter or amr meter when actually interval data are there then we aggregate as a virtual metering as if there is a virtual meter and virtual meter is not only at the customer but also at different uh, network nodes as if there is a meter which actually creates a stronger network what is the benefit <coughs> my peak capacity summation divided by the transformer capacity it was used to be some some around 30% if you go across india you will find this uh, by doing this i have increased that percentage to 50% means 20% energy or load i am serving without any additional capex that is also reducing my technical loss right so what do you want as an investor who can make more business with the same investment that's what we are doing so uh, these are the actually main thing other than that also like this smart metering had created uh, ping command 30% of our outage uh, outage calls were generated by the customer where problem was inside the customer premise we have saved that right not only that thing now uh, we have automated that at the crm customer call center agent also know that uh, what is happening at the back end where to waste the time where to give the time right and it is also on the self service on the mobile app so even customer wants to check it from their bed they can do it right mm-hmm. so uh, these are the thing another thing is the last gas and many other thing you know that those are actually had generated lot of savings uh, the reading billing collection like the remote disconnection connection those are the 7% of the saving 93% savings are different right commercial loss like the theft identification that is another area yes, yeah uh, yeah <coughs> so that's all Side. Yeah, you know, I I think I go back to Mr. Sam, Mr. The uh, Sarkar. See, the challenge actually what is happening here, uh, people do not not all the people they actually understand how uh, insight can actually bring value to the customers. So there there is a definitely little bit actually you no know, technology enablement and um, uh, you know something um, uh, the learning uh, a little bit analytics AI and uh, see the top line. um uh, uh, the decision makers for every organization should be at least should go through this kind of the session or this kind of things 
at least to let them know what can actually the technology can bring back. So that's what actually when I started my engagement two, three years back with Tata Power Mumbai, a very small, my personal interest project, Mr. Sardana was there, Tata Power Mumbai. We were just mm -hmm. actually bringing oh, up really a small good. commercial industrial customer energy saving dashboard. How to uh, identify the maximum demand bridge, power factor bridge, uh, you know, the TOU rate calculation where they are giving the penalty. So the basic thing. But at least let the commercial industrial customers be aware of where they are bleeding. Okay. So these kind of the things, I think, until unless you have an awareness session, you have a learning session at the discount level, it's very difficult to, you know, uh, visualize uh, whether really analytics or AI actually brings up the value to the table. Okay. So I just want to conclude the discussion with a question to Mr. Nick. So Nick, I, you have gone through the uh, you know sessions and we have a very interesting discussions. So what is your closing comments uh, you know, on the, on the prepaid uh, metering or actually the billing system revampment uh, from, from Indian contest where actually the network is a challenge when there is the customers, uh, you mix up rural and urban. So there are a lot of challenges, but what, what is your actually point of view in terms of the smart billing or smart, you know, smart prepayment, uh, prepared uh, facility implementation? Um, well, well, firstly, I have to say a smart billing system is a, it, it's a very broad term, right? So um, it, it, for me, and, and the perspective of many customers is, is a smart billing system a problem to solve or an opportunity to realize? So if you can imagine a spectrum on the less, on the left, you have the your current system. It may be an old system, but you may have enhanced it to, to be able to build smart metadata. You may have also managed to make the necessary requirements to make it prepay enabled. So you had a problem or a challenge of smart metering, and you perhaps maybe very skillfully implemented these requirements within your current system. Bottom line, that's a smart meter billing system. Congratulations. But by thinking of smart billing, smart meter billing in this way, you have made it. Um, you have made it work in the context of your legacy business process. So business processes that were designed for a 20th century utility business model, where the end consumer was an afterthought, where most utility business processes were manual and labour intensive. Now let's move to the other end of the spectrum. Okay, let's call this the business transformational end of the spectrum, where a smart meter billing system gives your utility a massive opportunity to realise real value in a rapidly changing energy landscape. And this is the type of approach that I see globally at the more progressive utilities from around the world adopting. They view their smart meter billing system as an opportunity to redesign and digitalize their business process and as a way to adapt to a, a, a rapidly changing energy, uh, energy industry. So um, you can't do this by simply extending your legacy billing system. So, um, transformational smart billing systems, they unlock the opportunity for utilities, allowing them to innovate more. They're built from the ground up to help utilities unlock the value in the smart meter data. And that's where the value is. And they go far beyond simply billing, okay? They focus on the customer, they focus on the data. And as I said before, this is the approach that we've seen at the more progressive utilities internationally. Um, and this is my, I guess, my initial point of view of, of smart meter billing systems. Okay, great. Thanks, Nick. And uh, thanks, Ira, for giving the opportunity. Uh, so I think we had a very nice discussion. Uh, so I'm closing the session now. Over to you, uh, Ira team. Thank you so much. It was uh, very, very interactive. I thank all the panelists and the moderator. Thank you so much.